so we're just about to go on the water. Well worth the visit. Michael Collins is there, Eamon de Valera is there, Brendan Meehan, the poet, is there. We're on our way to find the place. We know where it is, but yeah, this is on our way to the Viking Splash Tour. What's up guys? Today we are in Dublin and we're gonna go on a Viking Splash Tour. Nearly there. There is the bus. Look at that. Loki. It's an amphibious, not a tank, but a truck. Nice. Salikod, Salikod. What's my gonna Salikod? This one is fast. Did it on the old man can do Nice, go. We are up it. here now. I just As have you it. come up, they have these hats. Look at the Viking hat. We used to have one of these. Nice. Does I can't it fit you? See. You can't see. Oh my god. Yes, sir. Yeah. Does it fit you? Nice. So, where are you staying when you're there? So, your man is. <laughs> Pulling up the steps, the stairs. There's no more going out of this. I'll be your tour guide today. So I noticed that we have lots of different accents on board, but we've one thing in common on this on this duck, as we call them. We're all Vikings, and what do Vikings love to do? We all love to roar. Everyone else out here is a gale, right? We don't like them. We don't like us. So when we see them, right? Especially when they're not looking because it's extra funny. We're going to shout. We're going to give it a big roar. So we're going to practice that now. One, <laughs> like raise your fists in the air like this. One, two, three. <laughs> not bad. Not bad for a first try, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, the whole tour lasts about roughly about 75 minutes. We will be going into the water at the Docklands and I will explain what the procedure is then. This is my, uh, my driver, Beer, from the Philippines. His cousin is Manny Pacquiao, so don't annoy him. <laughs> Not really. Now, just coming up on our left here, we have Dawson Street. Straight down there is where the mansion house is. Can you all hear me? Sorry, yeah? Okay. Straight down there is the mansion house. The other thing that's down there is St. Anne's Church. Now, who likes vampires? Yes, we all love vampires. Who wrote the book Dracula? Bram Stoker wrote Dracula in 1897. He was married down in that church, at St. Anne's Church. And the woman he married was the ex-girlfriend of Oscar Wilde. She had a thing for writers. Down there we have Grafton Street, a pedestrianised street in Dublin. It was meant to only last two years and it's now been nearly 40 years and it's still pedestrianised. Straight ahead, we have St. Stephen's Green Shopping Centre. It has the largest clock in Ireland in the centre of it, if you go inside. Now, as we turn down here, this big building here with the columns on it, if you look closely, you'll see many holes in this. They are bullet holes. They were made during the 1916 Rising. Maybe they weren't good shots. Now, so as we make our way into this little alleyway here, I just want you to make note of how small it is. This would have been the standard size of medieval streets in Dublin. It wasn't really until the early 18th century where the Widening Streets Commission came in. They knocked down most of the medieval buildings and built these grand Georgian buildings which we see today. I'll talk more about that later. have a habit of being very long so I'll just tell you a bit about the history of where Dublin got its name from. So Dublin in English doesn't mean anything. What does it mean in Irish? Dove is Irish for black. Lynn is Irish for pool. Dove, Lynn, black pool. Because the river pool
Coggle, which we will go over and I'll point out where it goes into the River Liffey. That, um, that there used to be a pool there where the Vikings in 841 AD used to come up and they would first spend their winters here. They would spend their winters here because the sea was too rough to go back to Scandinavia, but by and large they then um, settled and founded the city, what is now Dublin. The Irish for Dublin is Balia Oha Clia. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it means uh, Balia is Irish for town or settlement. Oha Clia is means where um, the, the hurdles where they cross the river. There are many places, like for example, Balimina up in, up in uh, Northern Ireland, Bali, Balia Namina. That's where the Bali comes from. Medieval, medieval wall of Dublin used to be. The wall was first constructed in 1100, just before the Normans arrived. It lasted up until 1680, until they knocked it down, like I said, by the Winding Streets Commission. But there are still remnants, there are certain um, places where you can still see the old medieval city wall of Dublin, particularly around Thomas Street. But many things are underground. You'll see on the right hand side there's a needle. What's special about that? If you go inside it, they have a glass floor. When they excavated it, you can actually see parts of the old medieval city of Dublin. We're coming up now to George's Street. Named after the George, King George IV of England, because right from 1801 to 1922, Ireland was officially part of the British Empire. Before that, in, uh, England still ruled over Ireland, but it was the, it was the Lordship of Ireland. That was uh, what they called it. We George's Market on the right there. It's a Victorian market, still open to this day. heading up to where Dame Street is. If you look on the right hand side you'll see Trinity College, founded by an English Queen, Elton John. I mean, was it Elizabeth II? Or first? Yes, Elizabeth I, 1592. Side where Christ Church Cathedral is, one of two medieval churches in the, in the old medieval city of Dublin. The other one is St. Patrick's Cathedral, the largest cathedral in Dublin. the seat of the British Empire in Ireland right up until 1922. It was first built in 1204 by Bad King John. You guys remember Robin Hood? Yep, that was uh, built by him. He was the first, his father, Henry II, was considered to be the first king of, of Leinster. So in 1680, Dublin Castle had a nasty habit of burning down. It burned down four times. The last time in 1680, so they cleared away most of the medieval wall, the medieval building, and they built the Georgian building, what you see here today, apart from the record tower. That's the only surviving medieval tower from that period. It dates from 1224. Bram Stoker also worked at Dublin Castle. Before he became a writer, he was a clerk. So in the age before computers and stuff, clerks would record um, uh, they would record uh, kind of business, you know, how much profit and things like that people were making. The building on our left here is the City Hall. It's also covered with bullets. Oh, here we have a group of tourists, guys. Will we do a roar? Three, two, one. Roar! Ah! Very enthusiastic. Uh, first one of the day, first so many. We'll do another one of the two of us. Three, two, one. Oh! Take that, guys. 
Straight in front of us we have Christ Church, founded first by a Viking um, king called Sidric Silkenbeard. Oh. Oh. What goes around comes around, but ours was better. You call that roaring thing. So founded by Sidric Silkenbeard in 1031. It was first made of wood, then in the uh, 12th century it was rebuilt by the Normans. The Normans came here in 1169. Who was the person who led them? A man named Richard the Clare, or better known by his nickname, Strongbow. He was invited by Dermot McMurrah, who was the deposed King of Leinster in 1169, and his reward was his daughter Aoife. You can still see Strongbow's tomb, which is in Christchurch Cathedral. Down on our right here, we have a small street. It's one of the oldest uh, streets in Dublin that still has the name. It's called Fish Ample Street. And although it's quite unimpressive, the German composer George Friedrich Handel first composed, uh, first uh, played live his uh, famous song, uh, The Messiah. I think he was in seven for, uh, 1742, you know. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Sorry. <laughs> it sounded better back then than it did to me. I, I, I trust you. You know what they say about Handel? He was really hard to get a hold of. And you know what they say about height? You could never find him. He was always hiding. Oh, so. Um, straight down here, uh, when we go past these sites, you'll see St. Patrick Cathedral. That was initially outside the city walls of Dublin. Founded in honour of Ireland's patron saint, St. George. Oh wait. No, it was St. Columba, sorry. Ah, St. Patrick. To our left here, we have Dublin. If you want to know more about the medieval city of, uh, of Dublin, that's a very good place to go. I'm going to go there. And speaking of medieval, uh, the medieval city, all along here, to my right side here, this is where the uh, the original uh, Viking settlement would have been. If you look up on the ground, you'll see lots of art, uh, a lot of um, mosaics of art, artifacts they found. Then they built this giant monstrosity. Sorry, not you guys, not you guys. They built this monstrosity in the late 1970s. They were given one year to clear it out. They found over one million artifacts. They reckon there was probably twice that amount still buried here. The largest collection of Viking, Viking medieval artifacts outside um, Scandinavia is right here in Dublin. It is 205 feet high, or 62 meters, and it was built in 1817 to commemorate the Duke of Wellington two years after the Battle of Waterloo, where the Duke of Wellington defeated Napoleon. Sorry to the French people at the back, I'll just be désolé, I'm sorry. So if you look along here to the right, you'll see, the, you'll see a, a monument to a, a long ship over there. In remembrance to the, Viking, uh, to the Vikings who founded the city. This bridge here, it's called the Essex Bridge, but we nicknamed it the uh, Cable Street because Cable Street is straight up there. And my great grandfather, his name was Luigi Nardoni. He came from Cesenatico in Italy. And my middle name is Luigi, and I was born on his 100th birthday. Now, prepare to be amazed. The next bridge that we see here is called the Millennium Bridge. Three million it cost. Probably one of the most boring bridges in Dublin. <laughs> Over here, this big building here, it's a hotel. Bono and the Edge owned that hotel. Bono has a habit of falling into the river. Why? He always stands too close to the edge. Yay! <laughs> now, here's something worth looking at. Over here is the Wellington Bridge. Opened in 1817, but it's better known by its nickname, the Haypenny Bridge. Why? Because from 1817 to 1918, you had to, in 1919, you had to pay half a penny to cross it. It was Dublin's first steel bridge. It was also Dublin's first toll bridge. Over on 
the other side we have Temple Bar. First named after William Temple in the late 17th century. I'm not much of a drinker myself, but apparently some pints there cost 12 euro. Bit of a rip off. I think that if you're looking for a proper pint, I think the further away you go from the centre of Dublin, the, the cheaper and the better they get. So here we have the River Liffey. It's at low tide at the moment. I think we just passed it, or did we get just beyond the Haypenny Bridge, actually? There's, a, there's kind of a hole in the wall. That's where the River Poddle comes into the uh, river. Most of the river puddle now in, in, in the centre of Dublin is built over. But in the medieval times, that's where the, the, the Dove Lynn, the Black Pool, would have been. And it was eventually covered over, I think, in the 1830s, where they built the... Um, it's now a helicopter pad where the Dove, where the Dove Lynn um, uh, pool used to be. So what's unique about uh, O'Connell Bridge is that it's the only square bridge in Europe. It's actually wider than it is long. It was built in 1880. There's Daniel O'Connell there. What's significant about him is he's known as the Liberator. Because in 1798, Ireland had a big rebellion. They didn't like being part of the British Empire. Unfortunately, they failed. And then the penal laws came in. So the penal laws lasted until the 1830s. So Catholics were not allowed vote. They were not allowed own land. They were not allowed own a horse. They weren't allowed to read. So Daniel O'Connell went to Westminster, which is the seat of the British government, and asked for Catholic emancipation, and he got it. He died then on the way to Rome, and his heart was buried in Rome, and his body was buried in Glasnevin Cemetery. It's the largest uh, uh, grave to a, uh, dedicated to a single person in Ireland. Well worth a visit. Then we, Michael Collins is there, Eamon de Valera is there, Brendan Meehan, the poet, is there. Uh, Charles Stewart Parnell, where, uh, where Parnell Street, if you go to the top of O'Connell Street and turn left, you'll see uh, Parnell's statue there. This bridge over here, it's called the Rosie Hackett Bridge. It was opened in 2014. It's the only bridge in the city of Dublin named after a woman. On the Hawks. Crossing it now is the Lewis. Lewis is Irish for speed. It goes 30 kilometers an hour. <laughs> they say when the southern, when the southsiders like myself go north, when they go on the Lewis, it's the only time they ever try speed. I'm not going to explain that. There's children on board. Over on our left here, we have Liberty Hall. It's the home of the Simtube building. It was Ireland's first skyscraper. It's only 65 meters or 210 feet high. Straight ahead where the dark green building is, is Custom House. Built in 1797, the boats used to come before all these bridges to here. The boats would come all over from the world, would come up here, and they would be uh, recorded of what their goods were in the Custom House. If you look on the roof, you'll see an emblem with a lion, a unicorn, and a harp. That is the old emblem of the British Empire. You'll never guess, it was also burnt down. It was burnt down during the Irish War of Independence in 1921, and I believe it took six years to rebuild. Thousands of records were lost, unfortunately, like the four courts as well. Also, that, build, big, that big building over there is Musaurus, the main bus station. Aurus, actually, in Irish, means main place. So, Aurus on Uthron means the main place for the president. We also, uh, I don't know, I admit I don't know too much about uh, Irish politics, but uh, we also have a word called Taoiseach. Taoiseach is Irish for leader or chief, and he acts as like a prime minister. So the oof they're on, the president sees more, or she's more, depending on who, who's in, who's on term, uh, is more of a figurehead. It's a Taoiseach who really runs the country. So we've been a bit of a sad episode here. You see these statues here on my right-hand side? They represent um, there to commemorate the Great Famine. It began in 1845 and lasted to about 1850. Yeah. The population of Ireland in 1840 was about uh, 8 million. In 1850, it had gone down to about 6.5 million. One million died and one million emigrated. Went, they usually went to uh, either America, Canada, England, or Australia. 
my own great great grandfather went to America. He was 14. Uh, he, him and his brother, I think, went there to escape the famine. He didn't speak any English. He only spoke Irish. But he was one of the few who actually came back and built the house with the money that he earned that we still own to this day. Now, just behind there, you'll see those sails. That is the Genie Johnson. It's a replica of what the, what the famine ship would have looked like. 200 people would have been clamped onto a boat that was about 150 or 50 meters long. The average time it took to go from Dublin to America, about 40 days. If you made it 35 or less, you were doing good. One in six people didn't make it across America. Now the bridge we're about to cross, it's called the Samuel Beckett Bridge. You see the suspensions? Anyone, can anyone guess what they're meant to represent? I'll give you guys a clue. A harp, yes. If you look, uh, the harp is a symbol, uh, is one of the uh, main symbols of Ireland. If you look on our flag, the, uh, with the, the blue flag that we have, there's a golden harp in the middle. Why is the harp a symbol of Ireland? Because it dates back to Brian Baru. He was the only High King of Ireland for three hours. He won the Battle of Clontarf in 1014 and he was killed when a, when a Viking um, named Bruder snuck into his tent and murdered him. Brian was about 80 years old. And they found a harp, which is now in Trinity College. You can go see it. It does not date from the time of Brian Peru, but they kind of say that to, you know, to make it seem kind of more kind of uh, interesting. It probably, although it does date from about the 16th century, but they call it Brian Peru's harp, so they, that's how the harp became a symbol of one of the symbols of Ireland. buildings at the moment but if you look straight out there you'll see Dublin Bay at the boat that, that you could take to go out to Dublin Bay it's not here at the moment but I've been on it and it's really really good well worth it on a day like this where it's calm and it's sunny it's very good it takes you around Holt which is on which looks like an island although it's not an island Still call it the Grand Canal. Board gosh, just doesn't sound doesn't sound as as cool. I think. Now the last uh, time someone was publicly hung in Ireland was in 1868, just outside Mountjoy Prison. Then Ireland banned the uh, capital punishment in 1954. Now, straight ahead is Poland's Mills. Opened in 1873, it produced flour and biscuits. It was taken over during the 1916 rebellion by Eamon de Valera, although not much action really happened in that, in, all over here. Although he was arrested and then taken to Kilmainham Prison where he was going to be executed but because he was an American citizen the Americans wanted him on the side uh, British wanted America on their side because they were fighting the Germans at the time during the First World War and just when we pass these lights I have to turn the mic off because we're going into a residential area and they hate to hear the sound of my voice to go on the water. We're going. We're going to have a no And just for safety. Ready. Go. Oh. <laughs> That's 
was the Viking Splash. We're now officially real Vikings now, aren't we? Minus the taxes and swords and slaves. Yeah. Now guys, if you look straight down here to my right, you'll see the docks. They connect to the River Liffey. Uh, this dock, I think, was built in the early 19th century. It is 600 cool, meters long. It? it is 250 meters wide. It is 22 feet deep or 7 meters. Yay. So if you look straight down there, you'll see the Tree Arena. It was originally a, a big storehouse, and then wow. in 1988 it became the Point Theatre, and then it became the O2, and now it's the Three. Maybe in a few years it'll have another name. <laughs> So this dock connects to the Grand Canal. There are two canals in Dublin City. There's the Royal Canal, which is on the north side, and the Grand Canal, which is on the south side. The canal was built in order to transport goods all the way around Ireland, particularly around the west of Ireland. There's still remnants of that. If you look around, uh, particularly the old brick houses, you see the doors are wider than normal. They were for the horses. So the barges, the barge is basically a boat, see those boats up there, they're barges, they would have transported goods all the way, sorry, they would have been tied up to a horse and then walked along, and we'll go uh, around this corner here to the right and then all the way through the, to the canal. They were built before there were proper roads in Ireland, so a trip on the canal would probably take about two or three days to reach Galway. But then in the 1840s, the, tra the trains came to Ireland, and you could do that in about six hours. So there wasn't really much, they didn't really use the canal for too many years, about 30 years, give or take, until the Second World War came around when coal was scarce, so they, they, re they reverted back to pulling the, the barges around uh, by horse. the barge is all gone, but something else has taken its place. This uh, uh, contraption here, you can learn how to water ski. I haven't seen people do it in a while, I admit. We can also kayak. We have kayakers down there. Maybe what we might run them over or watch them fall in. It's always funny. On my right here, this building with the graffiti here, that is a recording studio. The most well-known band that uh, record there, U2. I think they're one of the most top 20 successful bands in the world ever. Straight ahead we have the, uh, the main entrance of the Borgosh Energy Theatre. Those red kind of um, sticks that you see on the green, um, the green seats, they're, they're a part of a modern art called uh, Urban Forest. Three million in cost. And the best thing about it is at, about it at night is you can't see it. <laughs> That's Dublin for you. Three million to build that, like, yeah man. The building on its right, with the uh, right uh, squares on it, front of the hotel. And you represent the Giant's Causeway, but I don't think it looks in any way like the Giant's Causeway. Giant's Causeway is in County Antrim, actually, 15 million years old. left here you see a very tall black building that is the headquarters of Google over 250 nationalities work there and the main reason why all these companies have their uh, now based in Ireland is because Ireland has quite a low tax rate now as we're going by these pipers guys will you give them a roar let's hope they fall in ready as Jack Sparrow would say, wait for the opportune moment. Three, two, one. Ah! That caught your attention. Hello. Now, 30 years ago, this was quite a run-down area. When the docks went out of business, this place was quite forgotten. But in the early 2000s, a lot of people, a lot of rich people, invested in here and turned into the area that we see now. One of the 
most expensive properties in Dublin is, is here. A penthouse suite in one of these buildings across here, two million. Wow. Hello. A few famous residents, Colin Farrell, the actor, Louis Walsh, the band manager for Jedward. Wrong direction, I mean, one direction. <laughs> West Slide Boys own his properties here. So under that bridge, we won't go underneath it. Under that bridge, that's where it joins up to where the Grand Canal is. We'll be crossing over it in a moment when we go out. As I mentioned before, this area is quite expensive, so uh, people, what people tend to do is they live on barges. They either rent a barge or they buy a barge, and behind there actually too is uh, there are quite a few barges where people do still live on them. Uh, that's a barge, see the, uh, the uh, maroon kind of colored boat, that's what a barge looks like. Thank you, make it back in one piece. 
90% of the time the the, uh, the tourists have to get out and push the boat up the water. Oh. I don't, I, I just have to sit here. Nah. Now guys, when my colleagues go around, um, they'll be collecting your life vest. Please don't throw your life vest overboard. Just wait until they'll they'll come to you. I'm gonna hop out again, and uh, I need to take the pontoons off. We are back in one piece. That's how. There you go. Vivian. Thank you. So this big building over here, that is the Iveena Stadium. It used to be the Lans Ro Lanstown Road Stadium, the first purpose-built rugby stadium in Ireland. Now heads down for this low bridge here. Yeah, just watch your uh, selfie stick there, don't want to lose it, ruin your holiday. Here we go. Oh. There's only a 30 centimeter or 20 centimeter gap, I think. We could just about go underneath it. Beggars Bush Barracks. I used to work there for a year. If you see the railings along there, they are actually cannons. I'm either taken from the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Remember the Duke of Wellington I said earlier? So what a barracks is, a barracks is a place where soldiers live and work. After the 1798 rebellion, they built lots of them. This is one of the few of the um, surviving ones in Dublin. It was used by the British until 1923. It was then used by the Irish for only one year during the Irish War of Ind uh, uh, Irish Civil War, and then they closed down and is now home to a print museum and offices. Now, as we cross this street, this is where actually one of the most deadliest uh, fighting happened in the 1916 rebellion. There were 17 rebe rebels with 17 rifles hidden up in these uh, buildings over here. And when the British came out of that barracks to march into Dublin City to Hall Street, they were fired upon. They killed over 200 of them. You'll see a monument up here, a stone monument commemorating that. And my great-grandmother was there. She was 21 at the time, and she remembers walking out in the middle of the gunfire with a white handkerchief telling them to surrender. And she reckons the reason why she didn't get shot was because she was a woman. There's the Grand Canal Theatre there. So where we come up, where we went in, uh, is the entrance just over there. And this goes all the way to Donegal, to, to Galway. It's where we get the turn to keep you on the straight and narrow. There are no turns, it just goes from one point to the next, that's where we get that from. Now we are now entering an area called George and Dublin, named after King George I of Britain, 1714 to 1830. It's known as the Golden Age in Dublin's history because this is where most of these brand, that's the time these most brand new buildings were born, were born, sorry, were built because um, the, when the Widening Streets Commission, as I mentioned before, happened, they knocked down, they cleared down all the many of the buildings and built these grand Georgian buildings that we see now. Just over here on the right-hand side is the National Maternity Hospital, better known as Hollis Street. My mother was born in there, my grandmother was born in there. However, it is not the oldest maternity hospital in Dublin. That belongs to Rotunda. I was born in there. Hello! We were too late on my bad. The Rotunda was the first purpose-built maternity hospital in Europe opened in 1747. If you look along the facade of these buildings, you'll notice that the windows get smaller. That's to give the illusion that the building is actually taller than they really are. But there's also another reason for that. In the Victorian times and the Georgian times, there was something called the daylight tax. Basically what that was is you could, you had to pay, there was a certain amount of tax you could pay for how much sunlight you could bring into your house. Ridiculous. And the servants lived at the very top. They had the smallest windows because they couldn't pay the tax. You'll notice on these 
these buildings over here, the windows are blocked up. They were most likely because people couldn't pay the window tax or the daylight tax. And that's where we get the term of robbing daylight. One is to prevent the, uh, the spread of a fire. When the Great Fire of London happened in 1666, they were not allowed to build um, buildings with thatched roofs inside the city. So they were built as fire breaks and also they served another purpose. A horse and cars could turn all the way around and not having to reverse or go around a different street. So they had plenty of room for that. things must come to an end. After the 1798 rebellion in 1801, Ireland was made officially part of the great of the uh, British Empire. So most of the landed gentry, they left the Dublin because they didn't think it was safe and they went back to England. Slowly but surely these buildings were left abandoned and they were occupied by tenants. What a tenant is, is someone who doesn't own a property, they rent it out. At one point they were owned by rich people, then they became known by poor people. So they became owned by... They became owned by poor people. And that was like that right up until the 1950s, really. When the kind of urbanization of the began. is called Merrion Square. It's now it's famous for its statues, probably the most famous one being Oscar Wilde. He was born in a house just outside Merrion Square. He's not buried in Ireland, he's not buried in Glass uh, Glass uh, Nevin, he's buried in Paris. He died in 1901, he was only 46 years old. His statue is unique too because it's the only uh, coloured statue in Dublin. It's not painted, I actually made a mistake, I thought it was painted, it's not painted, it's just made from different type of rocks. His green jacket is made from emerald. exactly one kilometer, one mile, sorry, or 1.6 kilometers in circumference. It's the only square, I believe, that it, uh, there is only green that actually is squared. All the points are the same um, uh, width. Bram Stoker lived just 
across from the uh, National Museum of Ireland. And here is where we're back where we started. So guys, on behalf of myself, my uh, driver beer, Gormila Mahukata Sutok there and Turnus and you. I sound like an air hostess, don't I? Gormila Mahukata Sutok, please, when you um, uh, uh, take off your seatbelts, I will then lower the ladder and you may disembark. And again, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. We're going down. Nice driving, Koya. Okay, driving. Ah. Filipino. <laughs> oh, kumusta? Magano ka na katagal ba sa ano? Dito. Mag 23 years na ko dito. Ah, oh, we have a uh, Filipino driver here. Um, gano ka na katagal sa kanila? Um, pang ano ko na ito, pang 13 years ko na dito. Oh, itong, itong, talaga? Mas Filipino good. rin dito, itong isa. Ay, ganon? Ah, oh, meron din pala dyan. <laughs> Okay, din ano? Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, um, ingat, ingat. Sige ko ya. Okay, bye. See that? Right. That was a cool, cool, cool yeah. experience. What can you say about the tour? It was good. It was good. Yeah. yeah. It was better than I expected. Oh wow. Okay. What do you like most about the tour? It looks a lot different than I thought, and well, the water part. Oh, the I water part. I didn't believe you. Yeah. I, I I thought it was wooden. Yeah. Nice Everything one. Everything about it was fun. And you've and learned, learned so much. Enjoyed it. I hope you like it too. Yeah. And hope please like and subscribe. Yes. Okay. Till next time. Bye. -bye.